Hey guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. So, uh, welcome. What's up if you're new here? Today we're gonna be talking about, uh, is that something on my camera? Um, sorry guys, I just gotta, you know. Okay, well, it's not gone, but that's all right. Today we're gonna be talking about social media because it needs to be talked about. This is something that I uh, think about often. Um, I like learning about it, so I'm pretty passionate about the subject. We're just gonna get right into it. So I've noticed it's became extremely hard not to go on social media during these isolating times. So um, people are using social media and the internet way more than ever. I mean, if you really think about it, it really does make sense because it's like you have all these people in isolation, you know, they're in their homes with all this spare time on their hands and they're bound to gravitate to these pleasure devices, distraction boxes. And they sit there and they spend hours scrolling through Facebook or watching YouTube videos and their time is just gone like this. It turns out that whenever we search or Whenever we browse, we're leaving behind digital traces of our behavior called digital exhaust. Whenever you think about these, these big, you know, multimedia companies, these social media platforms, these websites on the internet, your attention equals currency for them. It's literally a transaction. Your attention is being sold. That is really the reality of the situation. It's like your brain is being sold by these companies. Like they are just selling your attention, selling your time to gain money. You're basically like a product. That's all they care about. And they don't care if they're wasting your time, if they're wasting your money, how they this affects you or your mental health all they're worried about is spending your attention and keeping your attention as long as they can and as often as they can constantly grabbing it and these companies I do think that these are very beneficial devices when used properly. Like, I think it's great to talk to your friends and to keep up with your friends and to learn things from the internet and to laugh. And I think all of that is great. But I do think that there is definitely some, some negative impact as well. Like these apps, these websites, social media is designed to be addictive. Pretty scary how many people are addicted to them. Things like TikTok, it's like a slot machine and you just pull a trigger and you wait for something else to pop up. It's literally like the same kind of mechanism. You just keep swiping, thinking that something intriguing or distracting is gonna pop up. Like just hoping to be surprised. Anticipation to see if you got enough likes, to see if anybody has posted anything. And then even even when there is no gratification, even when there is nothing there, you still go back a few minutes later to see if anything has changed because you have fear of missing out. It's very addictive. Everything about it, the way it lights up, the way that all the sounds are created, everything is literally created in a certain way, specifically so that it keeps your attention and it keeps you wanting more. Like it is created like that to a pin. And these are subconscious triggers you don't realize you have. They're kind of ridiculously hard to control because you don't have to think. It's happening whether you realize it or not. These apps, these social media websites, these websites on the internet have AI, artificial intelligence, that is literally constantly catering to your every facet of like everything that you click, everything that you do. It is recording that and it's putting that in this algorithm that is designed to give you stuff that you will watch and stuff that you will click on. Regardless if you really want to waste your time clicking on it or waste your time watching it. And it's kind of shitty. I can't tell you how many times I've went on YouTube YouTube, and I've watched videos or gone down some rabbit hole that I never ever would have imagined myself going down. If I sat on my computer and knew I was gonna be watching some makeup scandal, I wouldn't be watching it. But it's the fact that like it just takes you in. So they give you these titles and these pictures that just seem like, oh, that's interesting. But I didn't sit down to look that up. This artificial intelligence I'm talking about, this AI is literally monitoring everything you click on, everything you do. Like this facial recognition startup he invested in, MegV was started by three young graduates in 2011. It's now a world leader in using AI to identify people. It's pretty fast. For example, on the mobile device, uh, we have timed the facial recognition speed. It's actually less than 100 milliseconds. Uh, so that's very, very fast. So 0.1 second. Uh, that we can, we'll be able to recognize you, even on a mobile device. It knows what you like. It knows what you don't like. 
I had a conversation with a fellow who's an engineer, and I was just talking to him one night at a you know at dinner at a cocktail party, and I there had been something in the press that day about privacy in the paper, and I remember asking him, he worked for Google, what's the big deal about all why, why are people so worked up about it? And he said, oh, you'd be horrified if you knew how much we knew about you. And I remember that kind of stuck in my head because I, it w was not what I expected. It knows what you watch. What I've learned since is that their entire business is learning as much about you as they can. Everything about your thoughts and your desires and your dreams and uh, who your friends are and what you're thinking, what your private thoughts are. And with that, that's true power. I, I didn't know that at the time. Uh, their entire business is basically ma mining the data of your life. What you don't watch, how much you like to spend, how much you make. It knows where you live. It knows everything about you. Whether you realize it or not, it does. AI has evolved to adapt and learn solely on its own without human interference. AI is literally constantly learning on its own, creating algorithms that work on people without people even being behind the algorithm. There's not some guy behind a computer choosing how this stuff is figured out. No, like AI is constantly doing it on its own. Google acquired DeepMind several years ago. The percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. DeepMind operates as a semi-independent subsidiary of Google. The thing that makes DeepMind unique is that DeepMind is absolutely focused on creating digital superintelligence an AI that is vastly smarter than any human on Earth and ultimately smarter than all humans on Earth combined. DeepMind's AI has administrator level access to Google's servers to optimize energy usage at the data centers. However, this could be an unintentional Trojan horse. DeepMind has to have complete control of the data centers, so with a little software update, that AI could take complete control of the whole Google system, which means they can do anything. They can look at all your data, you can do anything. We are rapidly headed towards digital superintelligence that far exceeds any human. I think it's very obvious. This is mainly scary because when you have something like AI constantly catering to the subconscious attention triggers in your mind, it can become indistinguishable from reality. Where your mind goes, what you think about, the reality you live on, when you go on to Google what you see. When AI is catering to every little facet of your brain, to your specific person and what you watch and how you perceive things all the time, it gets to a point where you have trouble distinguishing your reality that you're currently living on those sites from what is actually real. It's just confusing because you can see so many news stories on one thing and think that you know and you are educated on the subject when there's a completely different line of news stories on another person's end. Another person could be fed a completely different story. You guys could both be fed your own complete versions of what that reality is. Your own conspiracies, your own side channels, small channels, big channels, and everybody's getting fed their own information. Nobody's getting fed the same thing. And this is why there's so much controversy. This is why there's so many people arguing all the time. This is why politics is so bad. This is why people are in different worlds and they have trouble colliding and they do all the time. The internet has became a little bit of a dark place because of all the people with so much hate and so much confusion. It's so hard to decipher what is real and what isn't. Imagine all these companies, these big companies competing for your attention. Companies, people, social media in general, anybody on it wants attention. They're all competing. It gets to a point where people are doing anything for your attention. And even if that means giving out false information, lying. And I think it's just really interesting and really freaky because a lot of people buy into it. I think it's important to be aware of how much time you're wasting on social media. Hey guys, so that was the video. Originally, this video was supposed to be how the algorithm is ruining your life and 10 things you can do about it. But when I was editing it, I just got so into editing the whole why it's messed up part that I didn't have time for the other half as to what you can do about it. So if you guys are interested in seeing a part two, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I hope you guys like it. I'll see you guys in the next video.
the way you move into the drum.